I just came across this paper, a model that predicts football match outcomes from all over the world, last week. It's always good to check to see what's going on, to see whether new methods have been developed. And here, the paper describes Dolores, a model designed to predict football match outcomes in one country by observing football matches in multiple other countries. The model is a mixture of two methods, dynamic ratings and hybrid Bayesian models, Bayesian networks. It was developed as part of the international special issue competition, machine learning for soccer. So interesting to know that machine learning for soccer is treated so seriously that there are actual issues just dedicated to that. Dolores is trained with a single data set that incorporates match, incorporates match outcomes with missing data from 52 football leagues from all over the world. Okay, Dolores ranks second in the competition with predictive error 0. 94% higher than the top and 116.78% lower than the bottom participants. Okay, that looks interesting. Dolores provides empirical proof that a model can make a good prediction for a match outcome between teams X and Y, even when the prediction is derived from historical match data that, n that neither X nor why participated in. Interesting. So basically the model is trained maybe just looking at football in Italy and Spain and Brazil and then it's shown a, a match or asked about a match in Ireland. It's testing how well the model has kind of understood football. Okay. While this agrees with past studies in football and other sports, this paper extends the empirical evidence to historical training that historical training data that does not just include match results from a single competition, but results spanning different leagues and divisions from thirty five different countries. This implies that we can still predict, for example, the outcome of English Premier League matches based on training data from Japan, New Zealand, Mexico and so on. In addition to data from the English Premier League. So this, to me, looked relevant. An interesting paper. Association football is the world's most popular sport. At the, at the turn of the 21st century, FIFA estimates that there are approximately 250 million football players in over 200 countries. From a financial perspective, the European football market alone is projected to exceed 25 billion in 2016-17. Okay, so this paper isn't that new. Whereas the global sports gambling market is estimated to be worth up to 3 trillion, with football betting representing 65% of this figure. So football betting is big enough. Several studies focus on the various aspects of football, from analysing player development and injury recovery to team psychology and match tactics. This paper is concerned with the challenge of developing a model that is capable of predicting the outcome of future football matches. Excellent, that's what I want. 
over multiple leagues and divisions. Past relevant academic studies typically focus on a single league or tournament, with predictions derived using various predictive modelling techniques. Yep, that's, that's exactly what we've been looking at, trying to predict the Premier League, looking at historical data and that kind of thing. These can be divided into statistical models, machine learning and probabilistic graphical models. Oh, machine learning and probabilistic graphical models and rating systems. Interesting, because we can compare what we've looked at with what they found. And this is good, because we've actually done all of these in a broad sense. So statistical models, application to football match prediction typically include ordered probit regression models and Poisson models with Poisson models being what we've looked at most. There'd be a link at the top of this where you can look in greater detail and we can get our Poisson model from the course, which is the video about at the top as well. These studies are typically published in statistical journals. Machine learning and probabilistic graphical models so the decision tree we used with the betting odds typically include genetic algorithms and neural networks. These studies are typically published in computer science and artificial intelligence journals. Rating systems. Oh, there's a link to machine learning looking at betting odds data at the top of this video. And the, it, the links will be in the description below the video as well. Rating systems, application to football match predictions are based on variants of the widely known ELO rating system. And we've looked at that as well. Initially, I think more looking at it in tennis, but it's also used strongly in football. Having been originally developed for chess. So that's interesting since they've looked at the whole range of methods that are available for football prediction and from that they have these three broad strands. Statistical models, machine learning and probabilistic graphical models and rating systems and we've looked at all three of them. Now, this will then go into the details of the particular model, which I might have a look at later on someday, but I was interested to see what the review part of it said. What was the, the big picture? Have we missed something? So if there were this, if there was this new branch, which was really exciting, then we'd want to have a look at that as well. It's also interesting when looking at the summary, since basically it's what you'd expect, that the model does well at some stage, but you can't get steady, predictable uh, performance. Where was the... I think I've zoomed past. Concluding remarks. The paper describes Dolores, which is a model designed to predict football match outcomes from all over the world. The model is novel in its approach, which is based on dynamic ratings and a hybrid Bayesian network model that takes the resulting ratings from A as input to infer home and away distribution. 
the distribution. The model was trained with a data set of 52 leagues. Unlike past relevant literature, this model is designed in a way that enables it to predict football match outcomes of teams in one country by observing match outcomes of teams in multiple countries. So this looks interesting and uh, might, be int might be worth looking at covering in greater detail later on. The paper extends the assessment of the model to a profitability-based validation based on bookmakers' odds from 21 different leagues and over a period of approximately seven football seasons. Which is better than I expected. The results indicate marginal profits of 1.09% return of ROI over all top divisions and marginal losses of minus 1.57 over all lower divisions. While the overall ROI is not impressive, it still serves as empirical proof that the model, which was, based, which was solely based on goal data, has generalised well over all leagues and divisions, even accounting for the missing data incorporated into the data set as part of the challenge. Furthermore, while detailed historical performance for each team is typically required to maximise predictive accuracy, Delors provides empirical proof that a model can be that a model can make good prediction for a match outcome between teams X and Y, even when the prediction is derived from historical match data that neither X nor Y participated in. Further to profitability, it's important to note that relevant academic literature is often driven by profitability from betting simulations on match instances of the EPL. In many cases, these results are based on a single season of the EPL. Interestingly, Delors generated 20% plus ROI based on approximately seven seasons of the EPL. Rather impressive performance. However, as shown in table six and seven, this level of profitability is not repeated for any of the residual 20 leagues taken into consideration. Given that the EPL is the most popular league, this enforces the popular hypothesis that the enormous betting volume dictate part of the published market odds, and this enables predictive models to exploit such inaccuracies. We'll have to think about what that said again. So it's okay, so the EPL is the most popular, yes. Enorm so it has lots of betting volume, yes. Dictate part of them. And this enables the predictive models to exploit such inaccuracies. So the odds for the EPL are determined by all the people who are betting and since most of that betting money is not based on highly sophisticated and finely tuned analysis it actually leads to good possibility to find value or something like that however as the table to consider Okay. However, the model, the results show that profitability between the seasons of the same league is not consistent. In the case of the EPL and over seven seasons of betting simulations, annual profitability range between minus 6.4 and plus 38%. These all-inclusive results raise some concerns about the validity of conclusions in past relevant literature, because if typically before people only looked at one season and made judgment and made judgments based on that, that doesn't seem to scale. If you have a model that did very well one season, it doesn't mean it, it would do very well again in another season. As this shows, the same model, same approach might only do minus 6.4% one season but actually it's a good model because maybe next year was going to get 38%. This is because while there's nothing wrong with demonstrating that a model can identify such possibly biased odds and generate profit from bets on, on match instances of the EPL, there is still a risk 
that such results would be misinterpreted as generic and independent of the EPL. The results from this study also suggest that it would be best to extend assessment of profitability over multiple seasons. Finally, past studies have shown that, the, that it is possible to increase predictive accuracy to increase the predictive accuracy of a model by incorporating other key factors, such as player transfers, availability of key players, participation in international competitions, new coach, level of injuries, attack and, attack and defence ratings, and even team motivation, psychology, in the form of expert knowledge. Because of the competition requirements and multiple leagues captured by the data set, the model presented in this paper has to be restricted to goal scoring data. Future work will investigate ways to extend Dolores towards accounting for such additional key factors of interest. So that's something to keep an eye on. Perhaps down the line, there'll be interesting new results. And perhaps this code might be available to download so that we can use it. Next, we're going to have a look at machine learning. See you then.